Hello there, I'm Stephen Bunting and I'm a physiotherapist working in the northwest of England. If you're new to the channel and want to know a little bit more about me and why I'm making these videos, then I'll put a link up here or just see the video description below. My first video a few months ago was all about carpal tunnel syndrome, which is the most common nerve entrapment condition in the arm. Well, today's video addresses the second most common one, cubital tunnel syndrome. As with my other patient information videos, I'll tackle the condition by answering the three most common questions that people ask after they've been diagnosed. Number one, what exactly is cubital tunnel syndrome? Number two, why have I got it and how do I know? And number three, what can I do to get it better? Okay, so without further ado, on to question one. What is cubital tunnel syndrome? Well, it's a type of compression neuropathy, meaning it's a problem involving excessive pressure on a nerve. And the particular nerve involved in cubital tunnel syndrome is called the ulnar nerve, which is one of the three nerves that supply the hand with sensation and muscle power. The ulnar nerve travels along the inside of the upper arm, the inside of the elbow, and then into the hand. Nerves are most vulnerable to compression where they travel through tight spaces and the ulnar nerve is particularly vulnerable as it travels through a tunnel on the inside of the elbow called the cubital tunnel. In fact, you're probably familiar with the ulnar nerve in this area if you've ever banged the so-called funny bone on the inside of your elbow. But a more accurate name for this area would be the funny nerve because it's actually the ulnar nerve that gets banged. And it feels like a nerve, doesn't it? As it gives you that horrible buzzing or tingling sensation that can radiate into your little finger. The ulnar nerve supplies sensation to the little finger side of the wrist and hand, the little finger itself, and just half of the ring finger. And so the symptoms of cubital tunnel syndrome are usually an uncomfortable tingling sensation in this area. We call this area the ulnar nerve sensory territory. The other common compression neuropathy that affects the other fingers is carpal tunnel syndrome, which involves a different nerve called the median nerve. So if your symptoms are in the median nerve territory, then you're more likely to have carpal tunnel syndrome rather than cubital tunnel syndrome. I've done another video all about carpal tunnel syndrome, which I'll put a link to up here. Or again, you can see the description below. Like most musculoskeletal conditions, the symptoms of cubital tunnel syndrome can vary in intensity from mild up to severe. Mild symptoms are usually just an intermittent tingling sensation in the ulnar nerve territory, and people tend to feel it mainly in the little finger. The symptoms are often worse at night and first thing in the morning, but can also occur during the day, depending on elbow position and general activity. And the reason for that is that the cubital tunnel varies in size according to elbow position. When the elbow is straight, the ligament that forms the roof of the cubital tunnel is lax, and the tunnel is therefore at its widest position. With increasing elbow bend, the ligament tightens, and at full bend, the cubital tunnel is at its narrowest and therefore the ulnar nerve can become compressed in this position. If the condition worsens, then the tingling can become continual throughout the day and night and in the later stages, the deeper parts of the nerve that supply the hand muscles can also become affected, causing grip weakness, clumsiness and a lack of hand and finger dexterity. The main muscles supplied by the ulnar nerve are the small muscles between the fingers and the muscle between the thumb and the index finger. A visible wasting of these muscles is a sign of severe cubital tunnel syndrome. Some other physical signs of muscle weakness from ulnar nerve compression are a difficulty in crossing your fingers, or you might notice that your little finger sticks out to the side and you might have difficulty holding it in. This is called Wartenberg sign and is another indication of more severe cubital tunnel syndrome. It's also worth mentioning that the ulnar nerve can be compressed at other areas along its course. And the next most common area is just here in the wrist, in an area called Guyon's Canal. That's a different condition, but the symptoms are very similar to cubital tunnel syndrome. It's just that the nerve is compressed at the wrist rather than the elbow. And it's most commonly seen in cyclists due to prolonged pressure on the nerve from the handlebars pressing on that part of the wrist. Okay, so now we've covered what cubital tunnel syndrome is, Let's move on to question two. Why have I got it and how do I know? Well, people who develop the condition will often tend to fall into one of two categories. 
they've either banged the ulnar nerve at the funny bone with enough force to cause some nerve damage, or it's due to a repetitive problem caused by prolonged low level pressure on the nerve, usually as a result of sustained positions of elbow flexion. Sleeping with your arms curled up is probably the most common cause and why the symptoms are often worse at night and first thing in the morning. Other activities involving prolonged elbow flexion are things like working with your hands very close to your face, such as crafting or needlework, or perhaps operating some machinery. Also, some sports, particularly those involving throwing, such as baseball, javelin, or darts. Also, leaning through your elbows for long periods, perhaps while sat at a desk, can also cause the condition. I once had a patient whose main aggravating activity was running, and I couldn't work out why until I took him outside and watched him and found that his running style was quite unique as he bent his elbows right up as he ran. So in summary, the condition is usually caused by either a direct injury to the nerve, like a bang on the inner elbow, or by adopting positions of elbow flexion for long periods of time. It should also be noted that certain medical conditions can also affect nerve function and therefore make it more likely that someone might develop nerve conditions like cubital tunnel syndrome. Things like diabetes, thyroid disease and also long-term smoking or alcoholism as well as some vitamin and mineral deficiencies are among a number of conditions that can cause nerves to misbehave and make them more vulnerable to developing compression neuropathies like cubital tunnel or indeed carpal tunnel syndrome. A simple blood test can often screen out these conditions, so it's worth seeing a healthcare professional if your symptoms don't settle down. The next part of the question looks at how you know that you might have the condition. Well, it's usually diagnosed clinically, meaning the clinician will listen to your history and symptoms and then examine your arm, and in particular, the function of the ulnar nerve by carefully testing the sensation and the muscles that it supplies around the hand. One of the best tests though is to check the sensation of your fingers with a tissue at a time when you have the tingling or numbness sensations. If you feel the sensation is reduced in the little finger when compared to the index finger or thumb, and particularly if the sensation is reduced in the little finger side of the ring finger compared to the other side, well, that's good evidence for cubital tunnel syndrome. Another test that's sometimes used, and you can do this on yourself, is a Tinell's test. Tapping the area where the nerve lives on the inner elbow may cause that familiar shooting pain or tingling feeling. Test the other side for comparison though, as a normal nerve can sometimes feel uncomfortable during this test and it's only considered positive if there's a significant difference between your two elbows. If the diagnosis isn't obvious or your clinician thinks there might be other causes for your symptoms, then you might be sent for something called nerve conduction tests which can assess the function of the nerves in your arm in more detail and help provide the clinician with further information from which to help make a diagnosis or determine the severity of the condition which can help when planning treatment. And that leads us nicely onto question three. What can you do about it? What are the treatment options? Well, for people with just the intermittent tingling symptoms but no muscle weakness or muscle wastage, then the prognosis for recovery is very good. Indeed, the majority of people will get fully better within about nine months from the first onset of symptoms. This is because nerve recovery occurs at about one millimeter per day from the site of compression downwards. And if you do the maths for the ulnar nerve, that works out at about nine months for most people. To help encourage the healing process, the most helpful thing you can do before anything else is to try and identify and then reduce or stop any activities where you might be bending your elbows excessively for long periods. For night symptoms, that will probably mean using some sort of splint to stop you from curling your arms up, and you might need to use it every night for at least six weeks and sometimes longer. You can buy a cubital tunnel splint that will do the job nicely, and I'll put a link in the description below for something suitable. The slight problem with these splints is that they tend to hold your elbow in a fully straight position and that can sometimes be a bit uncomfortable, particularly if you're used to sleeping all curled up. And for a splint to work, it doesn't necessarily need to keep your elbow fully straight, it just needs to stop you from bending it all the way up. So if you can prevent your elbow from bending more than perhaps about 45 degrees, then that should be just as effective and will usually be more comfortable to sleep in. Other than expensive hinged braces, I haven't seen anything simple for sale that would work this way, but it's easy enough to make something yourself. 
If you used a rolled up hand towel or something similar as a block to put in the crook of your elbow and then keep it in place with a crepe bandage, well that should work just fine. So I would suggest trying a homemade splint first. If you find that you're fighting against it or waking in the morning with a splint all over the place and your elbow bent again, then maybe buy one of the commercially available ones. Another self-help treatment that might be worth trying is anti-inflammatory gel rubbed into the cubital tunnel region about three to four times daily over a few weeks. Because the nerve is so close to the skin surface, the gel can easily reach it and help to settle any inflammation. Please talk to a pharmacist or prescribing clinician first though, as not everyone can use anti-inflammatories. And that may be all the treatment that you need. Like I said, Cubital tunnel syndrome will tend to slowly get better all by itself over about nine months once you've stopped or reduced the elbow bending activity that is aggravating the nerve. There is also some evidence to support the use of nerve gliding exercises to help stimulate nerve recovery. Simple movements involving elbow bending and straightening will slide the nerve through the cubital tunnel and potentially help with the healing process. I've done a separate video showing three good exercises for cubital tunnel syndrome, which I'll put a link to up here. If all of that doesn't help, then you might need to see a specialist clinician about further treatment options. Some clinicians may suggest a cortisone injection into the cubital tunnel to help reduce inflammation around the nerve. But the evidence for this isn't great, and it needs to be done using image guidance, usually ultrasound, to help ensure the needle goes in the right place. Another procedure called nerve hydrodissection is starting to become more popular. This doesn't involve any cortisone, but instead involves injecting sterile water carefully around the nerve to try and separate it from the surrounding scar tissue that can build up over time. Early results are promising for mild to moderate cases of cubital tunnel syndrome, but this is a skilled procedure and you'll usually need to be referred to a specialist centre. And finally, if you have a stubborn case of cubital tunnel syndrome that isn't showing any signs of improvement after six to nine months, then you may need to talk to an upper limb surgeon about the option of surgery to decompress the nerve. Also, if you have any of the muscle weakness symptoms or visible hand muscle wastage that we discussed earlier, then you probably have more severe ulnar nerve compression, which is much less likely to get better by itself and will usually need surgical treatment. There's a few different procedures available, but the most common one is the ulnar nerve anterior transposition, where the surgeon frees the nerve from the cubital tunnel and then moves it further forward to a position where it doesn't become squashed when the elbow is bent. And that about wraps things up. I do hope the video has been helpful in teaching you ways of treating cubital tunnel syndrome yourself. And we've also discussed some of the other treatment options available if symptoms don't improve as hoped. Please feel free to leave any comments below, but please be aware that I can't answer any personal questions. Thanks very much for watching and bye for now.